I can't imagine what else to throw at it at this point. Um, for this kind of filmmaker or editor, I really believe that this one is worth it. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. And today we're going to be performing the third test on the new M1 Max. Now, we're performing these tests in order to help you decide which one to get if you decided to buy a new computer or whether you should be upgrading to one of the new computers if you, old, uh, if you own uh, last year's model. So the tests that we're going to be performing today are two of the most requested uh, tests, which are adding film grain and adding a lot of color effects to a clip until the computers cannot play it back in real time anymore. Let's start. So just like the last videos, uh, let's discuss the uh, conditions of the tests. All the timelines are 4K, all the clips are in 4K with H.264 uh, compression. There are no optimizations at all at any of the, on any of the computers, so the timeline proxy mode is set to off, the render cache is set to none, and the user playback settings are set to automatic, and we're using the latest version of Resolve. Again, keep in mind that we're trying to push these systems to their limits. In reality, you would have some sort of optimization added, whether it's render cache, lowering the resolution, using timeline proxy or any other optimization, um, and you will be able to play these clips in real time. Or, however, here we're just trying to push these systems to their limit to see the real difference between the new models and the old one. So again, the same computers. So uh, this is last year's uh, model. This is the M1 Mac with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the entry model from this year. This is the 14 inch model. And uh, so it's the one with the M1 Pro chip. And here we have the top of the line system, which is the M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM. So again, the question is, can these models play the clips with the effects, with the effects we're gonna be testing on them in real time? Uh, let's find out. That was a very bad intro, but it's the one I have. So let's start with uh, testing the clips with film grain, but first, did you know that you can go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for our free DaVinci Resolve Crash Course where you can learn the basics of each tab in Resolve? Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. So let's start with testing film grain. We have this clip here and we added uh, two nodes uh, to the clip. So the first node simply is a color correction node and the second one simply adds a film grain uh, effect. So let's start with the last year's model. I'll simply make it full screen, play, and it cannot play one instance of film grain um, in real time. We're getting 14 frames per second. So let's move to the entry model computer from this year, the same clip, full screen play, and one instance of film grain, and it plays it back in real time, no issues at all. We're getting 23.976 frames. So this is basically uh, real-time playback, which means that if we come to the uh, high-end model from this year, I'm sure it's gonna be playing it back in real-time. So let's move the play, uh, head to the beginning and play, and we're getting, again, real-time playback, no, issue at all, no issues at all. So these two totally won, they can totally play a uh, uh, clip with basic correction and film grain in real time. Again, remember, 4K timeline, 4K clip, no optimizations at all. This is extremely impressive by these two systems. So both of them can play uh, this back in real time with no issues at all. So let's move to the color test where we try to add as many color effects to clips and check playback. Again, we have uh, four instances of uh, the same clip with the playback being harder the, the more we move to the next instance. So the first one is the easiest one to play and the last one is the hardest one to play. You can see all of these nodes. So uh, 4K timeline, 4K clip, um, last year's model play, and we're getting uh, smooth playback like full 23 frames per 976, which simply means that for the same clip here, we're going to get the same playback. So as you can see, we're getting a uh, smooth playback with four nodes, you know, a lot of color correction added in every node and we're getting smooth playback on all of them. Remember, this is a 4K clip on a 4K timeline with no optimizations at all. And last year's model is able to play uh, four nodes with different effects in real time. So let's move to the next clip now. It's uh, a bit harder to play. The difference is that we added two secondary adjustments. One of them is tracked and we added the vignette. So 
Let's see if these can play them back in real time. So full screen, full screen, full screen. And let's start with last year's model, play. And again, no issues at all. So it's playing the clip in real time, which simply means that the other two will also play the same clip in real time. Remember, here we have uh, two secondary adjustments. Uh, one of them is tracked and we added a vignette and all of them are playing this back in real time. Let's move to the next test. Uh, the cool thing here is I really haven't tested these before. It's not like I know the results. I really have no idea what the results will be. But let's move to the third clip. Now here, we added film grain and we added a LUT and one more secondary. So, uh, full screen, full screen, full screen. Last year's model, and last year's model cannot play this back in real time. We're getting nine to 10 frames uh, per second of, of playback. Now let's move to the base model from this year. The same clip play, and we're getting 19 frames per second. Still not real time playback. Uh, 19, yeah, it's stuck at 19 frames per second. Now, the high-end model from this year, play and, whoa, no problem at all, like 23 frames per second. We have many nodes added. We had the film grain node, we have a lot added, and we added a couple of more secondaries that are tracked. And there is no issues with just playing, the, like nothing happened. So this system is extremely powerful. Now let's move to the last test, which is the hardest test, uh, because we added a dehaze effect to all of them. So let's see how it goes. First system, play. And no, of course, no real-time playback because it couldn't play the, the test before this. And I guess it's the same here. Uh, so let's just uh, play and we're getting uh, 15, 16 frames per second, which is still cool, but it's still not uh, real-time playback. So let's move to the high-end uh, system from this year. Let's all hope it plays it back in real-time. Play and wow, it's actually playing it back in real-time. So 23.976 frames. And remember, we added a dehaze effect. So we have a lot of things going on now. Notice how many nodes we have. Let me just make this a bit smaller. Like all of these nodes, we have color correction nodes, we have secondaries, we have a lot. Uh, we have the dehaze effect, we have film grain, and it doesn't care. Like it's just playing all this back in real time. I can't imagine what else to throw at it at this point, but it's playing this clip. Of course, this is a 4K clip, 4K timeline again, with no issue at all, but the other two cannot play the same thing in real time. This is unbelievably impressive. For the first time, I find a real reason to get the high-end model from this year, to pay for it. Now, there are two types of filmmakers when it comes to post-production. There is the filmmaker who doesn't have a client in the room working with them. So your client is not with you in the edit or the color grade. You might film something, you know, work on it back at home or at your studio and send the results back to the client. So while editing or color grading, the client is not sitting next to you. This simply means that you have the time to optimize your footage. So to render cache, to maybe you work from a lower resolution timeline, you know, you don't care about seeing the timeline in its full resolution. So for this kind of filmmaker, which is basically 90% of all, uh, all editors and filmmakers out there, um, my recommendation is still to get the model from last year. It's very powerful and with uh, a little bit of optimization, you can totally uh, make it work. However, the other kind of filmmaker is the, or editor is the editor who have a, a client sitting next to them in the room. So the client will actually come to the edit and he want to edit with you or maybe he will work with you on color and uh, he will just keep on asking for different um, effects to be added to the uh, colors of the image. Um, for this kind of filmmaker or editor, I really believe that this one is worth it. This computer is worth it because clients get really frustrated by the time wasted, you know, on rendering, on optimizing, or even um, on, they get really frustrated if you show them a lower resolution uh, clip. And even if you explain to them that later on export, it will be high resolution, they're still very annoyed because they cannot see the film in, in, in full resolution. So for this kind of filmmaker, if you have a client sitting next to you in the room, I think the new model is totally worth it, the high-end one, of course. Uh, but for the rest of us, I think the model from last year is more than enough.
So, I hope you like this. If you like it, please visit us at filmsimplified.com, where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com